What's up guys, it's Julian today. I'm going to be talking about the age old question. Did Barrio really make all those crazy tracks using Sony SoundForge? You know, a lot of people have wondered this since back in the day when he said in a few interviews that he used to use it to make those tracks. It seems crazy because there's no grid in that program. There's, no, there's very little ability to work with samples other than just like chopping them. So a lot of people have been perplexed about that. And today, I'm going to answer what it seems to really be. Because I believe he did use it, but maybe not quite how you think. So before I go into this video, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. You know, let me know if you want to see more stuff like this, kind of talking about big questions like this that people have been wondering for years. I haven't seen anybody else really talk about this. So definitely let me know that in the comments. Also, go to my website, Electronic Samples, in the description to get the best samples and presets and templates for modern electronic music on the market. I'm not kidding, guys. I put so long into this website and just really studying these tracks that you guys like and that we're all into and really trying to figure them out so we can all benefit from it if you want to get some of the best templates i'm really not kidding these are some of the best templates the money can buy and they're some of the most accessible templates the money can buy as well definitely go grab that in the top of the description you can also check out my lessons my ghost productions my track finishing all that is available at the top of the description too it's a really great deal and yeah let's dive into the video all right so to basically answer the question I do believe that Ariel, Burial used SoundForge. He was not lying when he said that. I mean, I don't think he would have said that if it was just like this big lie, right? However, I don't believe that the whole track was made inside of SoundForge. I, I think the way that he used it, it's like he wasn't lying when he said that. He was just being a bit cryptic, maybe. You know, I don't believe the whole track creation was SoundForge. I mean, because... If you really look at it, like, how would you do that? Like, yes, maybe making a bar of drums without a grid could lead to some cool stuff. But to actually, like, duplicate that over a whole track, like, I mean, I just don't see it. But at the same time, what I do know is back in the day, it wasn't like now where it's just like, all right, we got Ableton, like, and we have high-powered computers, like, you can just do everything inside of Ableton. Back in the day, you had to do a lot more resampling. You had to do a lot more freezing stuff down. You had to do a lot more kind of editing work like that, you know, kind of working with samples and then making a track as like this separate thing. I believe that what Burial did was he did use SoundForge for every track. But what it was, was it was like the actual chopping, like, Maybe he was using Logic or Cubase or maybe he was using Reason or something like one of these programs, which especially back in like, you know, early 2000s, late 90s vibes, those programs were a lot more limited. And it wasn't just like now, like, oh, OK, well, drag the sample into Ableton, zoom in, you know, quickly kind of work with it. Back then, that sample chopping, everything that you could possibly think of really with production, but especially that sample chopping was one a bit harder and two there just was like not you couldn't so quickly go in and do it so i believe what he would do is he would take his samples and chop them and kind of make himself little sample packs and then arrange that stuff inside of logic or cubase i'm saying cubase because i know a lot of those like like a lot of in the uk production kind of like german bass stuff and dubstep like when i first got started producing i was studying that kind of stuff and i know it was like it was a ton of videos of guys using that and girls too like just a ton of people would use cubase in that scene and reason and all that kind of stuff and i believe the sound forge was essentially to make up for the fact that you couldn't just so easily just chop up a sample inside of those so i think that's the thing it's like he did use it, but I don't think it was just, like, the entire track inside of SoundForge. The other thing that people don't talk about enough is that although Burial's music is very sample-based and it's very, like, obviously a collage of different samples, there are definitely some synths in there. In those early tracks, you know, I believe, I don't think he was making his main, like, motifs in the tracks with synths. I definitely believe that was a lot of samples, you know, to get those textures. But there's synths in there, different, like, there's pads that are definitely made with a synth. There's bass lines that are definitely made with a synth, you know. And SoundForge just, like, would not allow you to do that. Like, you would have to, I mean, 
I don't even think there's a metronome or like it's not like easy recording like you have in Logic or Cubase or Ableton or any of these softwares. So it's like I I think he would have had to even if he was using hardware, especially if he was gonna do any MIDI synths, which back then weren't as good for sure. But like I mean, there's just no way that it was SoundForge for that. Now he could also have recorded his stamp his stuff with a live synth into SoundForge and then chopped it further. But yeah, that's another thing is like the MIDI and the analog synths that are like in sync with the track and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you just wouldn't, I mean, maybe if you truly wanted to like, just like run up against a brick wall, you could maybe try to actually do that. I just don't see it. I just don't see it like to actually make those crazy tracks to actually make something like that which is so artistic and so such a like push forward in terms of sound. I mean, still to this day, like we're just kind of catching up to what he was on back then, you know? And so I think there's no way it was only SoundForge. I do believe SoundForge was used. I also believe that, you know, that is good. Like those guys knew what they were doing, like putting that in the interview, you know, like to just talk about that and kind of have this little this little like mysterious thing that could just sit on the internet for years and years and people in forums could talk about it like you know all publicity is good all publicity is good publicity and we a lot of us know what we're doing when we talk about that kind of stuff so that is pretty much gonna be it for this one guys like i said i wanted to demystify this i wanted to make a quick no bs video just explaining how i really believe it went down again i think that he did use it and i think that was not a lie because why would you lie about that but i don't think it was just i think it was like purposely cryptic so we would kind of like still we would still think there was some mis like mystique around him producing i believe he was using cubase or logic or reason or one of those kind of earlier things but soundforge was just to like chop up samples and make some packs. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for the support. Make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. You can grab all my sample packs as well as my lessons, my ghost productions, and my track finishing. The links for all that stuff is at the top of the description. Thank you so much for the support, everybody. Every little bit helps. And I will see you tomorrow with another video.